Carla, um, I'd like to have the opportunity of saying a few words here to say on the, on the budget that was announced yesterday. Um, I suppose, uh, just to, to make the first point, uh, I suppose not as often as we got an opportunity to speak on a budget that has been balanced for the first time in almost 10 years, and a reference we made earlier on to the fact that we've had a, a balanced budget. And I suppose if to sum up the budget, one could say we have a very prudent budget, it's very steady as you go, and a very responsible budget. And for the first time, as I said, in a long time, we're not going to have the boom to bust cycle, and we're, which will avoid the situation we've had in the past, where we, twice in my lifetime, I can remember this country being brought to the brink of economic disaster in 1977, when Fianna Fáil promised the sun, moon and stars, and almost destroyed the country, and 10 years ago, when totally incompetence brought to the brink of economic disaster. So for the first time in, in a generation, you could say, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and there's stability from an economic point of view. Uh, I'd like to concentrate my, my few comments today on, on two sectors in particular, the agriculture sector and the rural sector, uh, and in particular agriculture. The agriculture sector is a sector that doesn't often get a lot of priority in this particular chamber. I think it's important to highlight some of the issues and re-highlight some of the issues that the Minister of Agriculture himself bent uh, a couple of minutes ago as he left, uh, before he left the chamber. There's an extra 57 million allocated for the agriculture budget in the coming year, uh, which is very important, in view of the fact that it has been a very, very difficult year for the farming sector. And weather events have made sure that it has been a very expensive year uh, uh, for the whole agricultural farming sector. They've had to source extra and more expensive feeding stuffs and fodder that has been very, very difficult for them. But I think if we look back uh, before the budget, I think the big picture during the year has to be looked at, uh, not just this year but the past couple of years. And the two big issues facing agriculture over the next number of years are going to be Brexit and the climate change agenda. And these are two issues that need to be concentrated on very seriously over the next period of time. Uh, in advance of the budget, a lot of talk has been made about, about a subsidy for the suckler cows, uh, and there's no doubt that the suckler sector and the beef sector in, in general has been going through a very, very difficult time. But, but to a certain extent, in this discussion, there's been a lot of missed opportunities regarding to discuss the whole beef sector in general, uh, or what, what, where that is at the moment. Uh, just providing a subsidy to the, to the suckler cow isn't going to sort out the problems in general. We, we need more markets for our beef products. Our end result, what are we going to do with the products that we have? We need the meat industry to take up and to move up to the, stand up to the plate, to take responsibility for where the product is going to go. And in my opinion, we need the supermarkets also to stand up and take responsibility. There's a lot of very unfair practices, in my opinion, that need to be addressed. And I think we need to be able to, we need to tackle these now in a very, very strong way as we move forward, so that we can have very a, a fair and transparent market for our products. I'd like to welcome the new scheme that was announced yesterday by the Minister, the new Beef Environment Efficiency uh, Pilot Scheme was announced. Uh, as someone who, who, would, uh, who was very much in favour of the previous Beef Data Genomic Scheme, I believe that this scheme, or the two schemes together, will have very, very important uh, advantages for the whole beef sector as we move forward. It's about a more efficient uh, uh, animal uh, being available to the market as we go forward. The, and we're going to have, for the first time, as the Minister made a point a few minutes ago, we're going to, for the first time, real data available uh, from the weights of, of the, the animal, uh, the, the, both the cow and the weanling, going forward. There's 20 million euro made available for, for this particular scheme, uh, 40 uh, euro per head for the calf. 500,000 animals uh, are, are available for application of this. Uh, and I think it's very important, because bear in mind, with the whole climate change agenda that we're talking about, the whole efficiency uh, is essential as we move forward. We have to have a more efficient uh, uh, sector as we move forward. But I suppose, with regard to the Beef Data Genomic Scheme in the past, it was a scheme that, as I said, personally, I feel that was very, very good. But I think it got off to a very bad start. I think lessons have to be learned from the way that was delivered in the past as regards um consulting with the different organisations. Uh, as we move forward into the new scheme, which I think is a very useful scheme, as I say, I think it's important that uh, the state, all stakeholders are involved in whatever discussions are going to take place in advance of it being rolled out, so that we can have a very uh, straightforward process going forward, so we're going to avoid any hassle that we had in the past. Also, I'd like to welcome the extra funding that was put into the, the ANC, PM, ANC schemes, uh, an extra 23 million, bringing it back up to 250 million, which it was prior to the economic disaster, which Fianna Fáil left us with, in, and it's ironic that we've all left now at the moment, uh, that the economic disaster that Fianna Fáil left us in 10 years ago, uh, we're back up to that particular level, 250 million. 
Uh, as I said earlier on, one of the biggest challenges that the whole agriculture sector is going to face over the next period of time is Brexit and the uncertainty around that. Uh, as an industry, I think we have to be uh, very much aware for that. And I think it's important that extra funding has been put in, and I welcome that yesterday again, uh, 27 million in capital in, in Brexit related uh, supports available. Board B, in my opinion, have a huge part to play as we move forward uh, in that. And it's, a right, it's important now that they have uh, a war chest, if I could put it as such, of 46 million and a half million in total available for them to plan and develop extra markets and move forward. I think it's important they will play a big part in the future as we move on in that regard. Uh, I think it's also important to remember and welcome the taxation measures that were introduced yesterday, uh, the extension to the stock relief up to 2021 uh, and the stamp duty extensions which are all very beneficial to the whole agricultural sector. Uh, and the income averaging uh, for, to include all farm income also makes it more beneficial for the agricultural sector as well. There's one area I was very disappointed with, I suppose. There's, there's an area, you know, we have a lot of income volatility, in particular in the dairy sector. Uh, we're going to see um, uh, income going up substantially and drop substantially in every sector. I think it's important that we take allowance for that. Uh, and there was a very good proposal uh, put on the table by ICOS in the last number of weeks, which I thought was a very, very, very worthy uh, proposal. Uh, it was basically putting in place a rainy day fund for the bad year, whereby the sector could set aside a certain amount of funding uh, on a good year, put it in a fund uh, for the bad year. I would, I would encourage the Minister to have a look at this again. I think it has a lot of merit. Uh, you know, we're talking about a rainy day fund in, in general for, for an, at national level, but I think from a sector point of view, this can be very beneficial as well. And again, I'd encourage the Minister to look at this again as we move forward either in the finance bill or as we go forward uh, to next year. Uh, the other sector, as I said at, at initially, that I'd like to concentrate a few words on is the whole uh, rural affairs sector. Uh, I'd like to welcome the Minister here tonight uh, for, uh, for this particular part of the debate. I think the whole, this whole budget I think, has been very, very welcome. Uh, we've seen in more recent times yeah, first of all, it's important to point out that an extra 50 million has been allocated, 53 million has been allocated to this area. This money is very well spent and has been over the last period of time. If we look at some of the, some of the different uh, schemes that the Minister introduced in the last couple of uh, years since he came into office, I'd like to welcome this. It was important to remind uh, everybody about these schemes. The Town and Village Renewal Scheme, I think, has been a crucial scheme introduced in the last while. Uh, from my own point of view, last week we've seen three quarters of a million euro come to County Carlow. Uh, that, that total is over two and a half million has been allocated in Town and Village Renewal Scheme money to County Carlow, one of the smallest counties in the country over the last period of time. It has benefited every town and village uh, from Michel, from Tin Ryland, from Tullow, from Clamore, to Ardat, and all small villages right around the county. It has benefited them substantially uh, over the last period of time. It has also given the communities an opportunity to come together uh, to plan and strategize and put pl structures in place so that they can be sustainable for the future. So it's a very welcome fund. Like to, uh, it's great to see that there will be more funding available for that in the coming year. Also, the TLAR funding is also great to see that another fund that was, was abandoned a couple of years ago, I think, in the fall, uh, as, as they left the sinking ship, uh, and has been re re reinvigorated again. Uh, this is a scheme that, you know, again helps out small rural areas, uh, be it in, in the, the commu local community centre, be it in safety measures in schools, in small schools. It has a huge knock on effect right around the country. And also, the local improvement schemes. I think, again, these are very beneficial very schemes right around the country. So, you know, I think these schemes uh, and uh, the whole rural sector is important. We hear time and time again about the demise of rural Ireland. Rural Ireland is on its knees. Uh, I think it's, it's far from the truth. There's a lot of very good things happening in rural Ireland. Uh, and it had, had it not been for these schemes, we wouldn't see the communities coming together to make sure that they want to have a sustainable environment and sustainable community going forward. So that's those few words. I'd like to compliment, I suppose, and welcome the budget here today. Uh, or rather yesterday, uh, I think there's, uh, from an agricultural perspective, sorry, Justin Corley? No, I'm speaking to yeah. uh, You know, from an perspective, I, I think there is an acknowledgement, first of all, that the, the beef sector in particular has been through a very, very difficult year. I think some of the schemes that have been introduced, I think, will be very beneficial as we move forward. Uh, as, uh, to, to sum up, as I said also, that I think there needs to be a bit of liaison and a bit of consultation with the different organisations to make sure that whatever scheme is rolled out, or the scheme that is rolled out, will be very streamlined and will, will be very user friendly. From a rural perspective, I compliment uh, the Minister in, in getting an extra 53 million euro into the schemes. Uh, they are great schemes, have a huge benefit in rural Ireland and I can see huge benefit from going forward. So thanks for asking, Carla. The agreement. Um